everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Gosh, it's been ages since I've done a proper introduction. To be honest, it's just been so madly busy around here. This has been one of the things that I've just not had time to squeeze in. So hello again to those of you who have seen me before and a big hello as well to those of you who may be newer to my channel and have never seen me. Here I am, this is me. Now today's video is a collaboration with the fantastic Keely from Soy and Shea. Now I'm sure many of you know exactly who Keely is, but if you don't, check out the link that I've put in my description which will take you to her video that's part of this collaboration and then you can check out the rest of her channel and maybe subscribe to that as well. Now for this collaboration, Keely and I decided that we would do a theme which meant that I would make a soap based on an Australia theme, because that's where Keely lives, and Keely would make a soap based on a British theme, because that's where I live. So those are the soaps that we've made for our collaboration. Oh, and by the way, do you like the hat? This was actually something that I got after watching one of Keely's videos where she made a great suggestion about scrub caps for soaping and I thought it was a brilliant idea, they're nice and comfortable to wear and just make sure you don't get any of those pesky hairs in any of your soap or anything. Anyway, come on, let's go and make some soap. I'm starting my soap the day before by making an embed. Now what I've got here is a couple of jugs with some coloured oil in. So I've actually made up more oil than I need for my embed because I want the wave that I'm going to make to blend in nicely with my soap. So in that larger jug I've got a combination of some electric blue from You Make It Up and some neon yellow so I can get a nice sort of tealy aqua type colour and then I've just poured a bit of that into that middle jug and that way I know that I've got some of the exactly the same colour oils for when I actually go and use that in my soap later on. The other little pot of oil is just some plain oil that I'm going to muck around with and pop some titanium dioxide in later. So I don't actually need that jug of oil, that's for the soap tomorrow and I've just brought in here some little pots of lye. I've calculated the right amount of lye to go in with these bits of oils that I've separated up and I'm just going to simply blend them up to use them in my embed. So for my wave, I want to have some white bits which are going to be the very top of the wave that you get. But for the sort of aqua colour, I want that in a couple of shades. So I'm just going to separate off a little bit and add some titanium dioxide to it. So I've got a couple of shades in that aqua colour. Then I'm just going to add some pre-dispersed titanium dioxide into one of the aqua bits and also into the plain batter so I can get some white. Now I am measuring the titanium dioxide that I'm using obviously because of our regulations because I've actually weighed my bottle of titanium dioxide and then I'll weigh it again once I've finished with it for the day and that will tell me how much I've used and I can adjust that when I make the rest of my soap tomorrow. And once they're all blended in nicely, I'm just going to leave those little pots to sit and thicken up, sort of like a piping consistency, that type of thing. I definitely want to be able to work and mould with it a little bit. Now I don't have a wave shape mould and I'm not going to make one either. So how I'm going to create my mould is I'm just going to take some plain acetate. Um, this is very easy to purchase, you can get it on Amazon, all sorts of things. It's the sort of stuff, gosh I don't know how old you lot are, um, in schools teachers used to write on it over on overhead projectors, it's that sort of thing, but it's very easy to get. 
So I've sort of worked out how tall I want my wave to be, bearing in mind it's going to be curved, and then I've just marked the two lines onto this sheet of acetate. I've measured out the fragrance oil that I need for these little bits of soap, so I'm just going to divide it between them. And then again I'll just leave them alone till they come to the consistency that I need. So I'm going to start off putting the white down first because the outside and the top, the crest of the wave, are always quite white, aren't they? Where they've sort of been mixed around and it sort of lightens the colour of the wave. Then I'll just spread that batter around and what I want to make sure is that I do the sort of strokes of my little mini spatula as I finish, making sure they go in an up and down fashion so that it looks like the direction of the wave is going obviously top to bottom as the wave wouldn't have lines going across it. And then I'll just use up the other colours of my batter to build up the rest of the wave. And finally finish it off with a nice sort of white foamy top. And then I'm just going to leave it overnight to use the next day. To get the curve in the wave I'm just going to gently put it inside a piece of pipe. Now this is just a piece of pipe that I use for things like pull throughs or embeds. Mine's just a piece of plumbing pipe. So for the inside of my soap, I want to do an image that represents the Great Barrier Reef. Now, I'm sure, actually I don't really know, do people surf on the Great Barrier Reef? I can't really imagine they do. But anyway, let's just take a little bit of artistic license. I'm just trying to bring two Australian things together. So this first of all is a shape that I've just made an extruder disc for and it's going to be a turtle. So this is the turtle shell. And then I've also extruded some lighter strips of soap dough and those are going to be for the turtle's fins and its head. And then I'm just going to attach them to each other. I just use some distilled water between the two pieces, set the pieces on each other and then just leave them and they will fix to each other quite nicely. So here we are the next day. I've had my turtle setting up overnight. I did let it set up for a little while but then covered it in some cling wrap so it didn't dry out too much. And now I want to build my main soap. Now I've got a whole plethora of colours here and these are colours that obviously fit in with my assessment and I'm going to use them for my reef. So they're probably not necessarily the perfect colours I would have chosen if I had completely free reign, but they'll do. So for my coral and plants on my reef, I've got some neon yellow with a little bit of titanium dioxide. I've made some orange from my terracotta, mica and neon yellow. I've made some green from electric blue and the neon yellow. I've got some terracotta mica on its own. And then I've got some random activated charcoal, which I don't really want. Hey, <laughs> I've got to use it. So my plan for the activated charcoal is to imagine if you looked at a picture of a coral reef, then the undersides of the coral reef would actually be in shadow. So my excuse for using the activated charcoal is I'm just going to do a thin layer on the bottom, which will be basically the base of the coral reef where it would actually be quite dark. 
So I'm just going to pour that in, spread it out a bit and then leave it to set up for a little bit. And then to make the corals and plants in the reef, I'm actually going to pipe them. You could always do it by making some plant shapes and some coral shapes with some soap dough if you preferred. Now I'm not going to give you specific piping tip numbers here because I've just randomly just grabbed what I think will work to give me sort of corally shaped plants. So I've got one tip that is just a fairly large just round shape and then all the others are just various sort of star type nozzles so closed star open star whatever so I've just literally just grab some things like that I let those little bits of batter come to a nice piping consistency and then I'm just going to load each of them into a piping bag I have various piping bags I have some of those disposable plastic ones which I never dispose of. I always wash them up um, and just keep them and they, they'd last for absolutely ages. And I do have some of the reusable ones, which again, just wash up and reuse. And then just for ease, I've taken my mould apart so that I can just reach it and pipe on it nice and easily. Because that's why I think it would have been pretty tight because mine's quite a narrow, tall and skinny mould. So I'm just going to go through and pipe my coral reef and just gradually build it up using all those piping colours. Okay, so let's make up the rest of the soap then, so the sea. Now I've got that jug, do you remember the oils we made up yesterday that had the same colouring in them as our wave? So that's my smaller jug with the little pot of lye next to it. And then I've got a bigger jug with just the rest of the oils I need to complete the soap. I've had to split out my lye solution because see, I don't want to blend this all up in one lot. I do want to keep those colours separate. I am going to jump over the blending up because I'm sure you've seen loads of people blending up soap batter and we don't want this video to be four and a half hours long. So let's jump through to our mixed up oils. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. In the jug on the right with the green spatula in it, that is the oils that we saved yesterday with the aqua colour that we had mixed up for the wave. The other two jugs have electric blue in. The one with the orange spatula, I've added a tiny touch of activated charcoal just to darken it a little bit. 
and then the one with the red spatula has more activated charcoal in it with the electric blue again so we get that deeper blue for a deeper part of the sea. I have added my fragrance oil to these. I've been using Winter Wonderland from Nurture Soap for this soap. I know that's a weirdly named fragrance for this type of soap, but as you know, I'm tied with fragrances and colours that I can use. And to be honest, the scent of this fragrance is lovely. You could use it all year round. To me, it doesn't have a wintry smell to it at all. And I just call it Wonderland when I'm naming my soaps. I'm going to use a one pot wonder technique to get the C in my soap. Now with this, the idea is that you're going to pour all of your batter into one jug, hence the one pot wonder aspect. And what you need to bear in mind is you need to do it upside down because whatever you put in first is going to come out last. So as you can see here, I'm putting that aqua colour right at the bottom of my jug because I want that to meet my wave on the top so that my wave blends in with the rest of my sea. And then I'm going to put in my lighter blue because remember I need it upside down so I'm going from the top in first, then the middle colour and then I'll finish off with the blue to get the bottom of the sea around the coral. Now be careful with your trace with this technique. You don't want it too thin because if you have it really thin, as you pour the colours in on top of each other into the big jug, they're just all going to mix together and then you're just going to pour out a mixture of colours and that's not what we want. So I'm just checking here and just making sure that I have got a trace. Um, mine's a reasonably light trace but that's fine. You can afford to go to a slightly thicker trace. As long as your soap is still pouring fluidly, that's fine. Okay, so let's get these colours poured into the jug. I've got my aqua colour that I want coming out last already in there. And then just carefully pouring down the wall of your jug so that these colours gently drop in and on top of each other and they should gradually spread out across the jug. And then as you do your pour, you will need to tilt your mould because you must pour down the side of your mould for this technique to work well. I've got my custom craft tools um, cat angler here, but you can use anything, just something that will prop up one side of your mould. And then just take your jug and start pouring along the side of the mould, going backwards and forwards. It's a good idea to try and go backwards and forwards reasonably quickly. The quicker you go, the thinner your little lines will be and you'll have a more feathery effect. If you go slower, you'll have thicker lines and a sort of a more blobby effect in your soap. And then remember that turtle that I made yesterday? I need to make sure I remember to put that in. It's a little bit tricky with a rather large embed in the middle of a pour like this. So therefore, we're going to lose a little bit of the flowing design. But that's fine because I want a turtle in my soap. And then once that's in, I'm going to carry on with my pour. And it is a little bit tricky because this turtle is quite big. I don't want it to be too disturbed by the paw. So I'm just going to carry on and keep an eye on it to make sure it's not moving too much. And then as you can see, I do get a spatula in there just to try and hold it more or less in the position that I want.
Now, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Any time that you have a technique where you're pouring down the side of your mould, it's really important to lower that mould very gently, very gradually, because you want to have a nice, consistent design all the way through your soap. If you go and take great big chunks and lower your mould all down in one, or you bang it down, or if you wiggle your mould or something, you end up, I don't know if you've seen it, where you get some people and it looks like they've sort of got steps in their soap, they've got a chunk of the design, then it stops and starts again. Um, those aren't so nice, so just be careful about how you lower it down. And then also to finish off, again, if you've got a soap with a pour down the side of your mould, Make sure that as you finish it off and scrape out your jug, that you scrape to that side of the mould as well. So you carry on with the design. Don't go and scrape all over the top because then it's going to look like some sort of weird roof on the top of your design. So I've now got my wave and I've trimmed it to fit my mould and we just need to pop it into the top of the soap. And then once it's in, I'm going to just texture the top of the soap in front of the wave so it looks like there are some smaller waves in front of the big wave. And then I'm going to go around the back of the wave and just pull up some of that coloured soap just so it's not pure white at the back there so it looks like there's some of the sea splashing up the back of that wave as well. And then I've made some teeny weeny little surfers. I just cut the surfboards out of some white soap dough. And then for the surfers, again, out of some yellow soap dough, I sort of made a T shape and just bent them round the legs and stuck their arms out and then popped a little head on. I haven't added the film of me popping them on the soap because you couldn't actually see me doing it under the wave. So here they all are on the soap. And that's it now complete, so it can be sea popped overnight, ready to cut the next day. So here's our soap the next day, and you can see we've got that deep blue at the bottom getting lighter towards the top. Now the wave on the top is very secure and it's actually pretty sturdy. But I still don't want to risk doing this with my multi-bar cutter because I think having the entire multi-bar coming down on top of that embed that bends towards the soap could just be risking it collapsing. So therefore I'm just going to go through with my single wire cutter and just cut the bars one at a time. And that way I can just make sure I can support that wave as I push the wire through it and get my cuts. Oh, I know you've seen one already, but I was yakking through that one. So let's have a look at the other ones. I think they're coming out quite well. They do look really cute. I am going to cut out some of my faffing around with positioning through this cut. And let's just have a look at a few of the bars of soap. And then I'll just leave you with a few pictures of the final soap. I hope you like this soap and you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to pop over to Keely at Soy and Shea and have a look at her British soap video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. 
If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!